Greetings everyone at home. My name is Nkuna Chey from Ethan Zentivet College, stationed at Numati Campus, under the program Finance, Economics and Accounting, offering a subject called Applied Accounting Level 4. So today we are going to be together doing this subject under the topic Financial Statement. Then under financial statement, we've got two different types of statement according to our curriculum, Applied Accounting Level 4. The first one is an income statement. Then one might ask this question, what is an income statement? An income statement is a financial statement that is used to determine the financial performance of the business. So how can the business determine its own performance? What is the result at the end? What do we expect to get at the end of the income statement? There are two results to expect. One is the good performance. How can you see that the business has performed good? You can see by getting a net profit at the end. So, if we get the net profit, that will come as a result of our income exceeding the expenditures of the business. On the other hand, if the business performed bad or poorly so, at the end, it will get a net loss that come out as a result of income being less than the expenditures of the business. So in order for us to prepare the income statement, we need different things. The first thing that we need, it's a pre-adjustment trial balance. So in our pre-adjustment trial balance, you'll get two sections. The first one, it's a balance sheet section. Then the second one is the nominal account section. So when doing the income statement, we'll focus mainly in the nominal account section because we use this section to determine the financial performance of the business. Thirdly, we need also the adjustment, because we need to adjust certain accounts. So it's these three things is what we need in order for us to prepare the income statement. So we've got this layout. Unfortunately, as a student, you need to know the structure of the income statement by heart. It won't be provided to you during examination. So it's your own duty to master it so that during examination, you won't struggle or you won't find it difficult to construct the income statement using the correct layout. So here are our adjustments that we'll go through while preparing our income statement. So the first thing that we need to do is to record our sales or turnover for a year. Where do we get the turnover for a year or sales of the, for a year? We'll get that from the trial balance or pre-adjustment trial balance. So according to our pre-adjustment trial balance, sales amount shows an amount of 160,280. So, if you can check on our whiteboard, we've got this layout that will be used to complete our income statement for a year. So the company that we'll be busy with, it's called D&M Suppliers. So the first thing, at sales. As I said earlier on, that our sales amount is 160,230. But during the course of the year, there were some purchases that were returned back to the business by our customers. So we'll take the net sales, which is 160,230. Then we subtract the returns that were made by our customers. That, that amounts to 3,125. So we subtract our data allowances from the net sales. Net sales, we said it's 160,230 minus 3,125. Then 
we are left now with 157105. This is our net sales after subtracting the 3125 from the gross sales. Thereafter, we write the cost of sales that needs to be subtracted from the sales amount. Our cost of sales is 63,475. So from the net sales of 157, 105, now we need to subtract 63,475. Then we are left with 93,630, which is our gross profit for the year. So here in level four, we don't work on gross loss when doing the income statement. Always we work on the gross profit. From there, we add other income. So we need to check our adjustment. The first adjustment has to do with depression. The second one, it has to do with the bad debt. The third one has to do with the provision for bad debt. So if our provision for bad debt becomes an income, then it must go under the incomes. Then at the same time, if it's calculated and we get an expense, it must go to the expenses. Then now we'll quickly check our provision for bad debt. Then we've got a special formula to check the provision for bad debt, which is that has control less additional bad debt. Then multiply by the given percentage. So in this case, our debtors control from the pre-adjustment trial balance, it shows a balance of 9,636. Then we need to subtract the additional bad debt from the adjustment, which is 136. We subtract 136 from 9,000. 636, then we are left with 9,500. Then we'll multiply 9,500 by 5%. Where do we get the 5%? Adjustment number three says, adjust the provision for bad debt to 5% of the debtors. Then it's how we calculate the provision for bad debt. Then 5% of 9,000, 500 amounts to 475 rand. This is our closing balance for the provision for bad debt. Then to determine whether it's an income or expense, we need to check the provision for bad debt from the adjustment. Sorry, from the pre-adjustment trial balance. So according to our pre-adjustment trial balance, the provision for bad debt at 650. 650, it's our opening, balance. Then 475 is our closing. It's our closing balance. Then we'll say 650 minus 475. 650 minus 475. Then we get 175. Then 175 is our adjustment amount. Since it's a decrease in the provision for bad debt, then this 175 is regarded as an income to the business. So the first income to go in, it's our provision for bad debt. So when doing the income statement, you need to remember that you need to indicate each and every calculation inside brackets. So in this case, at the end, we got 175, but we said 650 minus 475. 
That's why we got 175. Then we go back to the adjustment. Adjustment number four, it has to do with stock on hand. Adjustment number five, it's about the loan. Adjustment number six, it's about insurance. Adjustment number seven, it's about water and electricity. Adjustment number eight says included with the interest received. It's an amount of 600 rand, which is applicable to the next financial period. Then interest received do affect our income. So we need to adjust our interest received. But with this one, it's simple and straightforward. It tells us that the amount included in the in, I mean interest received, it's 600 rand, which is applicable to the next financial period. That means this 600 rand is not for the current financial period, but for the next coming financial period. That means we need to subtract it from the interest received for the current financial period. Then we'll write interest received. Then what is the total interest received according to the pre-adjustment trial balance? If you can check there, N8, it's our interest received. Then we'll take the opening total, which is 2,684. Then we subtract the one from adjustment number eight, which is 600 rand. Then it's 2,684 minus 600 rand. That means the interest received for the current financial period is 2,084. Then we don't have adjustment anymore that affects our income. So if it's like this, we need to go back to our pre-adjustment trial balance and check other income accounts which are not affected by the adjustment. The first one, which is not affected by the adjustment, it's bad debt. It's bad debt recovered, which is 95 rand. Then after bad debt recovered, we have discount received. Discount received amount, it's 3,000. 628. So it's only four incomes that we have under other income. Then we need to add these four together to determine the total. We'll add 175 plus 2084 plus 95 plus 3600. 3,628. Then the total, it's 5,982. Then we'll add this 5,982 together with the gross profit, which is 93,630. It's 93,630 plus 5,000. 982. Then we'll get 99,612. This 99,612 is our income for the year. So the business, by the end of the financial period, managed to generate a total income of 99,612. Then our intention is to determine the financial performance. Then now we need to take all the expenditures of the business into consideration. Operating expenses. Then with operating expenses again, we'll check our adjustment against the pre-adjustment trial balance. So the first adjustment is for depreciation. It says depreciation for the year is calculated as follows. 
we hike at 20% per annum on the cost price method. So with this method, to calculate depreciation, we need to say it's cost price or CP multiplied by the given percentage. Then the answer is your depreciation for the year. So according to our pre-adjustment trial balance, Vihaitis shows a balance of 89,000, 89,885 multiplied by the percentage is taken from the adjustment. It will be 20%. Then multiply by 20 over 100. 89,885 multiplied by 20%. Then our depreciation for the year is 17,977. Then we write depreciation here. Depreciation, then open bracket. We need to indicate the different depreciation. For the highest, it's 17,977. Then we'll add the depreciation for equipment. According to 1.2, it says equipment at 15% per annum on the diminishing balance method. That means we need to calculate the depreciation on equipment at 15% per annum on the diminishing balance method. Then the method for diminishing balance, it's cost price minus accumulated depreciation multiplied by the given percentage. Then the answer is your depreciation. So in this case, according to our pre-adjustment trial balance, Equipment cost price, it's 59,778. Then we need to subtract the accumulated depreciation on equipment, which is 25,218. It's 59,770. Eight fifty-nine thousand seven hundred seventy-eight minus twenty-five thousand two hundred and eighteen. Then the book value at thirty-four thousand five hundred and sixty multiplied by the percentage for depreciation. According to adjustment, adjustment number two says we need to write off the depreciation on equipment at fifteen percent. Then it's fifteen percent or 15 divided by 100 multiplied by 15 percent then the depreciation on equipment is 5184 then this total must be taken to the income segment we add it together with the depreciation on the high list it's 5184 then the total depreciation for a year it's equivalent to 23,161. Then now we are done with adjustment number one. We move to adjustment number two. Adjustment number two says write off the account of N Madi a data as irrecoverable. Then this one it's simple and straightforward. You write bet debt from there. You go back to your pre-adjustment trial balance, then you check from the nominal account section. If you can check the N7 shows a total of 3,245. Then we need to add it together with the amount from adjustment number two, which is 136. That must be written off as irrecoverable. Then the total is 3,245 plus 136. The total is 3381 or is 3381. Then we move to adjustment number four. Why? Because adjustment number three 
was taken care of during the other income. Then adjustment number four says, stock on hand, according to fiscal stock take on 28 February 2020, trading stock shows an amount of 63,249. Then we use this one to calculate the trading stock deficit. Open bracket, then what we need to do here, we go back to the pre-adjustment trial balance and check our trading stock amount. Trading stock amount is 64,948. 64, we subtract the trading stock from the adjustment, which is 63,249. We said it's 64,948 minus 63,249. Then the difference is 1,699, which is our trading stock deficit. Then we are done with the first one under adjustment number four. The second one that has to do with stationary, it says stationary on hand it's 384. Then we write stationary and open bracket, we go back to our pre-adjustment trial balance, then we check the stationary total. It's 1,034. We subtract the stationary from the adjustment, which is 384. We'll say 1034 minus 384. Then the difference between the two is 615 which is stationary used during the financial period. We are done now with adjustment number four. We move to adjustment number five, which says the loan was obtained on 1 March 2019. Adjust the interest on the loan. So we need to go back to our pre-adjustment trial balance again. From there, you can see loan amount from AKS Bank is 20, uh, 25%, it's 50 thousand rand. How do we calculate this? We'll say 50,000 rand. Multiply by 25 divided by 100. 50,000 multiplied by 25 divided by 100. It's 12,500 for the whole year. Why are we calculating for the whole year? because the loan was taken from 1 March 2019. By the end of 28 February 2020, it has full 12 months within the organization. So that means we need to write it off against 12 months. But according to the pre-adjustment trial balance, the interest on the loan is 7,500. That means we didn't pay everything. Interest on loan it's supposed to be 12,000 according to our calculation but so far we paid only 7,500 if we say 12,500 minus 7,500 that was paid then we've got a difference of 5,000 rand the organization or the business still needs to make a payment of 5,000 rand. In accounting, we call this one outstanding expense or it's accrued expense. Anything that is outstanding, it's called accrued. Then we are done with this adjustment. So insurance, according to the pre-adjustment trial balance, it's 14,000. Then adjustment number six says, 2,400 was paid at the beginning of January. And for this current financial period, we'll take only two months, that is January and February. Then the rest from March to next year, February 2020, it's within the next coming financial period. That means it's prepaid expense. How do we calculate the prepaid expense? We'll take the 2,400 that was paid in January, multiply by 10 divided by 12. 
It's 2,400 multiplied by 10 divided by 12. Then it's 2,000 rand. Then we need to subtract this 2,000 rand from insurance. Then it's 14,000 rand total from the pre-adjustment trial balance less 2,000 rand. Then now we are left with 12,000 rand. Okay, adjustment number seven says the water and electricity account of 9,000 or 993 for February has not yet been paid. That means by the end of the financial period, we still owe the municipality 993 for water and electricity. We need to go back to the pre-adjustment trial balance and check water and electricity. It has an opening total of 5,234. Then we need to add it together with the outstanding amount, which is 993. Then the total water and electricity for the year is 6,227. So we are done now with our adjustment. Then we need to go back to the pre-adjustment trial balance and check all the other accounts which are not affected by the adjustment and list them as it is. Then from there, we need to add all the operating expenses together and come up with a total. Then we add from 2,000 or 23,161 plus 3381 plus 1699 plus 650 plus 125,000 plus 12,000 plus 6,227 plus 8,340 plus 2,296 plus 453 plus 3,234. Then our total operating expen expenses for a year, it's seven, three, nine, four, one. Remember to put this amount inside bracket because it needs to be subtracted from the operating income of the business. Then to determine the financial performance of the business, we'll say 99,612 minus 73,941. Then the different is the result, how the business performed. Then it's 25,671, which is positive. Then if it's positive, it means it's a net profit of or for the business. So this business has performed very well because it managed to generate a net profit of 25,671. So if you are instructed to prepare an income statement, always you need to get only one figure from whatever that will be given to you. Then the figure will determine the performance of the business. You need to go between the pre-adjustment trial balance and the adjustment. Because once you omit one of the adjustment or one of the accounts, that will give you a wrong picture. At the end, you might say you got a net profit while it's a loss. So for more information, you can visit our website, which is www.etlanzenicollege.co.za. Or you can go to Facebook, which is Etlanzeni Tivet College, or you can visit our Twitter, which is at Etlanzeni Tivet, or you can go to YouTube and find us there, Etlanzeni Tivet College. All the best. Thank you.